Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about regression. This video exists in a playlist all about regression models, starting with simple linear regression models and moving on to multiple regression models. Right now, we're talking primarily within the context of simple linear regression models, but the topic today, that is using logarithms within a regression model, applies to both simple linear regression models and multiple regression models. As usual, down below, there's a PDF version of these slides. All right, so I just first want to remind you about our simple linear regression model, and that model has this as a piece of it. That is the expected response, y, is equal to beta naught plus beta one times the explanatory variable x. And in particular, I want to remind you about the interpretation for our parameters. So beta naught is the expected response when the explanatory variable is zero. And we can see that pretty clearly just by plugging in x equals zero, that second term cancels and we're just left with beta naught. Now, before I gave an interpretation for beta 1 that said for a unit increase in our explanatory variable, then beta 1 is the expected increase in the response. I'm going to expand that a little bit uh, for the purpose of this video, and I'm going to say that if x increases by d, then there's a d times beta 1 expected increase in the response. All right, so now the goal for today is to think about uh, what happens when we, instead of using our original response y, we might use a log of y. And instead of our original x, we might use a log of x. And now overall, there are four combinations of using logs for x and for y. We already covered the first one, but we're not using a log of either. And so now in a series of slides, we're going to go through what happens when you use a log on y or on x. And throughout this video, I'm going to stick with y being our original response, and x being our original explanatory variable. And by original, what I really mean is that these are the variables that are of scientific interest to you. Typically, we care about the units on a particular scale. We probably don't care about them on the log scale if we cared about them on the original scale. And I'm going to provide an example here. So here's an example where we're looking at corn yield and the effects of fertilizer on that corn yield. And for the purpose of this video, it's really just a fictitious example, just to provide a context uh, for the work that we're going to be doing. Uh, in this context, the corn yield is being measured in pounds, uh, sorry, bushels per acre, and fertilizer in pounds per acre. And now, uh, using our simple linear regression model where we didn't take logs of either the explanatory or the response, then we can interpret these parameters this way. We can say that beta zero, is the expected corn yield in bushels per acre when fertilizer level is zero. And beta one is then the expected change in corn yield in bushels per acre when fertilizer is increased by one uh, pounds per acre, or we could say if there's a D pounds per acre increase in fertilizer, then there's a D times beta one expected change in corn yield. And throughout the video, we're going to be using this example just to try to uh, hammer home the points that I'm trying to make in terms of the interpretation of the model parameters when we start introducing logarithms. Now, one question is why we might use logarithms, and one answer, and I'll go through more answers at the end, but it allows us more functional relationships between our explanatory variable and our response variable. So the top left facet there is our simple linear regression response. There's two in each facet, there are two slopes, either a positive or negative slope, that is a positive or negative value for beta one. And so we can see in that first facet up on the top left that there's only two possibilities. Either we have a straight line going up or a straight line coming down. Um, these other facets provide different functional relationships between fertilizer and yield, if that's our explanatory and our response. So we see now some curvature Right? And that curvature might be a better representation of the data that you actually have. And so that's one of the reasons we might want to use logarithms. And now, as I go through and talk about using logarithms in either the response or the explanatory, we'll show additional plots that look like these that give you another visualization of the possible relationships between explanatory and response. All right, so we're going to start with imagining that our response is logged. So I'm going to write it this way, the expected value of the log of y, remember that y is our original explanatory variable. So the expected value of the log of y is beta naught plus beta one times x. Now, it gets a little bit harder to immediately interpret this because we've taken the logarithm of y, or it's at least harder to interpret on the original y scale. 
So now one thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this equation and instead of using expectations, which are the mean, we're going to write it as the median. So in this case, we can rewrite that uh, equation above as this equation, the median of our original response y is equal to e to the beta naught times e to the beta one times x. And basically all we had to do is take a logarithm, uh, sorry, take an exponentiation of that right hand side. Okay, but now this allows us to find interpretations for these parameters, or at least functions of these parameters. The first, you can imagine that if you stick in x equals zero, then that second term in the product goes away, right? Because e to the zero is just one, so we're just left with e to the beta naught. So apparently e to the raised to the beta naught power is the median of the response when the explanatory variable is zero. Now we can go through some math and we can figure out what happens if x increases by d. If x increases by d, then it turns out that there is an uh, e raised to the d times beta one multiplicative change in the median of that response. Now this multiplicative change could be uh, increasing or decreasing. It'll be increasing if beta one is positive and it will be decreasing if beta one is negative because e to the negative power uh, is a number below one. So this multiplicative change might be something like 60%. That is, it went from 100% down to 60% because of that negative beta one. Uh, equivalently, we could have had D be negative, right? And then there's gonna be the interplay between D and beta one. All right, so as an example in this corn yield uh, with fertilizer, if we model the log of the corn yield, then we have the same relationship we showed on the previous slide, but the way to interpret this in the context of yield and fertilizer is to say that e to the beta naught is the median corn yield in bushels per acre when fertilizer is zero. e to the d times beta one is the multiplicative change in the median corn yield in bushels per acre when fertilizer increases by d pounds per acre. And so one of the keys as you get into interpreting these parameters is to think about the units uh, that are in the problem, okay? But notice here that I've highlighted in red the two places where uh, we really have differences from our previous interpretation. We have the median, we have the multiplicative change. All right, so just to give a visualization of the kinds of relationships we can have when the uh, response is logged, uh, these are the two kinds of relationships we can have. Uh, the first one has a negative slope, that's why the curve is coming down, and the second one has a positive slope, that's why that curve is going up. You'll notice here that in neither case are you going to get below zero, and that's because we took the log of the response, uh, and when we uh, exponentiate, right, we'll never be able to get values that are negative. So you can only take the log of these responses if you have non-negative response values. Okay. Um, now we switch to the uh, second, really actually the third uh, version. This is now taking a log of the explanatory variable, but leaving the response variable as it is. So our equation becomes E, the expectation of the response is equal to beta naught plus beta one times the logarithm of our original explanatory variable. So immediately we have the interpretation for beta naught. What we need now is we need the log of x to be zero, because if the log of x is zero, then that second term goes away. But that's gonna happen when x is one, because the log of one is zero, and so beta naught is the expected response when the explanatory variable is one. Right? This is a situation that happens when you take the explanatory variable and you use the logarithm of it in a regression model. Uh, now it's not quite as obvious, but it turns out that if you want to interpret beta one, then if the explanatory variable increases multiplicatively by d, and I'll give you a couple of examples in a second, then this beta one times the log of d is the expected change in the response when that multiplicative change in the explanatory variable occurs. I should probably also have said earlier, but I'll say it now, that in all this slide set, when we're using log, we're really thinking about the natural log, but uh, a similar relationship will uh, exist if you use different bases for your logarithms. Okay, so um, if we, uh, as a couple of examples, we might think about having a doubling of x. 
right? That might be relevant for the context of the problem that we have. And if we have a doubling of x, then d is 2. So we just plug in that into the equation. We have beta 1 times the log, natural log of 2, is the expected change in the response when x doubles. Uh, another common uh, situation that people use is to have a tenfold increase in x, right? So that is x, the explanatory variables multiplied by 10. Then we have a beta 1 times the natural log of 10, expected change in the response. In our corn yield example, so now we're going to take the log of fertilizer but leave yield the same. So we have this formula. In this context, then beta 1 is the expected corn yield in bushels per acre when the fertilizer level is 1 pound per acre. Beta 1, uh, let's say if we're talking about fertilizer, it might make sense to do a doubling of fertilizer. A tenfold increase seems like quite a bit of extra fertilizer, so it might more, more sense in that context to use doubling. So if we're looking at a doubling of fertilizer, then we expect corn yield to go up by beta 1 times the natural logarithm of 2. The relationship you can see when you're looking at the explanatory variable being logged are, look like these. Uh, so the first one again has a, a negative value for beta 1, and the second one has a positive value for beta 1. So you get just two different functional forms uh, for the relationship between your original explanatory variable and your original response when you log that original explanatory variable. You'll notice now that you can go below zero on the response scale, right? Because we didn't take any logarithms of y. That's a possibility with this model. All right, so our final model to look at is what happens if you take a logarithm of both the explanatory variable and the response? Well, you start with the equation up here that says the expected log of the response is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 times the log of the explanatory variable. But we can rearrange that, and when we rearrange it, what we get here is that the median of the response is equal to e to the beta naught times x raised to the beta 1 power. Again, in this uh, situation, if x is 1, then that second term really just disappears, and we're left with e to the beta naught. So e to the beta naught is the median of the response when the explanatory variable is 1. Um, and now we're thinking about what happens as we increase x. Again, it's going to be a multiplicative increase. That's because we use the logarithm of our explanatory variable. So when the explanatory variable increases multiplicatively by d, then uh, d raised to the beta 1 power is the multiplicative change in the median of the response. Uh, as an example, if you have a doubling of your explanatory variable, then you have 2 to the beta 1 power is the multiplicative change in the median of the response. If you had a tenfold change in your explanatory variable, then 10 raised to the beta 1 power is the multiplicative change in the median of the response. If we're thinking about our corn yield fertilizer example, and now we're going to take a logarithm of both, so we have these relationships, then the interpretation is that the e to the beta 0 power, that is e to the intercept, is the median corn yield when fertilizer is 1 pound per acre. If we double fertilizer, then 2 to the beta 1 is the multiplicative change in the median of corn yield. Just to look at a couple of possible relationships between these two, um, right? So we have, again, a couple of different curves. Uh, again, on the left side, we have a negative value for beta 1. On the right side, we have a positive value for beta 1. Like before, because we logged the response, that the uh, there's no chance for these models to have a negative value on that y-axis. Um, the right plot uh, looks pretty linear. Uh, that's really just because of the uh, scale that I plotted these in to put them on the same scale. But you can certainly get non-linear relationships for certain values of the explanatory variable um, under this model. And I guess also given the intercept and slope that you have. All right, so let's go back to the question of why might we want to use logarithms at all, right? Really, it just seems like it's complicating everything, right? The interpretation is more complicated than it was before. And so there's a few reasons you might want to. Um, I, so I guess maybe I should add another one here. The first reason really is that there might be a scientific reason that you expect a different kind of relationship, that you might expect 
one of these relationships that I showed on the pictures earlier to exist between your original response and your original explanatory variable. So if, if that's the case, you might want to start with that as a scientific model. Then you're going to look at residual diagnostics. So you might look at residual diagnostics uh, with the original model, not taking logs of either. And some things that commonly happen is that you might notice that linearity is not really holding. And it might be the case that if you take a log of either response or explanatory or both, that now linearity becomes approximately true. Another common assumption that's violated is the constant variance assumption. And by taking logarithms of response or explanatory or both, you might find that constant variance is now approximately uh, adhered to. Um, oftentimes, if you have, especially for the explanatory variable, you might have points or observations that have high leverage. And if they do, it might be that you can take a logarithm to reduce the leverage that those observations have, and therefore they become less of outliers. Uh, and then finally, um, I know that the interpretation seems kind of complicated here, um, but this is actually a relatively easy interpretation compared to pretty much any other functional form that you might want for your explanatory variables. And so if you tried a different functional form, it might fit the data better, but the interpretation of model parameters is going to get much more complicated. All right, so as a summary of what we talked about in the first part of this slide set, um, that when you're using the log of the response, then beta naught says something about the median of that response. Uh, and beta one says something about the multiplicative change in that median. When you're using a log of the explanatory variable, then beta one determines something about the response when the explanatory variable is one, and beta one determines the change in the response when there's a multiplicative change in your explanatory variable. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. There's going to be another video about the same topic, and that video is going to use a real data example where we're going to choose, take a logarithm of either the response or explanatory variable, and go through the process that you would go through to look at diagnostic plots, make sure that they're okay, and eventually get to something that would end up in a manuscript. That is something that could be published. Hope to catch you there.